Oh my god, everyone. We're back. Is the channel dead? No, the channel is not dead. The channel is alive. We're gonna play some Baldur's Gate today. Baldur's Gate Enhanced Edition. Why are we doing that? Because I'm preparing for Baldur's Gate 3, of course. But it got delayed, so I thought, why don't we check out how everything started with Baldur's Gate 1. This Enhanced Edition, it's released like 8 years ago, and it's still quite expensive, also, to pick up. It's like $15 for your regional equivalent on Steam. Uh, it is a good game, but there's some things which are still a little bit janky with the game, I must say. So, uh, first of all, to get this to work even, it's not super intuitive how to get this to work, because even changing the resolution, if you go to the graphics here, you will see there is no resolution slider here. So how do you change the resolution? Well, you need to go into C, uh, your user, documents, balders. Whatever it's called, ULA or something, open with notepad, scroll down, find where uh, the settings is for your width and height of your uh, resolution and change that in that file. Took a while to, for me to figure that out. There's a lot of things that took a lot of time for me to figure out with this game uh, because it's not super obvious. By the way, Baldur's Gate, the version we're running now, Enhanced Edition runs, from what I understand, on the Dungeons and Dragons. 2.5 fifth <laughs> 2.5 <laughs> edition rule set. So if we compare that to Python and Kingmaker, that we're, I know it's not Dungeons and Dragons, but it's essentially 3.5 that we're running in Python and Kingmaker. And here we're running 2.5, which is an older edition, which means we have a thing called Taco, which we're gonna talk about, which is essentially the the to hit dice on or against Armor Zero. And uh, <laughs> stuff like that. We don't have the same, uh, same uh, how to say, the same progression of characters uh, as you have in 3.5. There's a lot of things which are not in 2.5, which are in the 3.5 edition. And then when we play Baldur's Gate 3 later on, that's going to be the 5th edition, which is quite different from uh, both the 3.5 edition and the 2.5 edition. I think the original was version 2 or something like that. I don't know what the difference is between the second edition and the 2.5 edition. No idea really. But, anyways, uh, there's a lot of explaining that needs to be done there. Because this game is quite complex, honestly. So, first of all, here we are. Uh, we were in the character creation now. Uh, I'm gonna import some characters. First, first I thought I'd talk about everything. So I'm gonna go through and create a character. And I'm gonna show you why I've already prepared a character because it takes a little bit of time to do this. So, gender, whatever, guy. That guy is... <laughs> looks perfect. Race? Okay. First of all, race selection. It's very important, actually, which race you select. You might look at these and you see some bonuses and things. Ah, it won't matter too much. It matters a lot because... Here's the thing. Humans is the only class... Only race, excuse me. The only race which can dual class. There's dual classing and there's multi-classing, of course. <laughs> <laughs> Little bit complicated. Dual classing, what, is, what does that mean? That means you start off as a class, you progress as per usual with that class, just as if you were a single class. You can even go with dual classing. I mean, you can even just start off as a human and you, don't, and you can decide later on, you know, if you want dual class. But you start off as one class. At some point when you level up, you're gonna decide, ah, okay, I want to be something else. And then you start progressing in that, but whenever you start progressing in that, you also lose all the abilities of the th of the thing that you progressed as earlier which means in practicality what this means is that if you start off as a wizard that's not super good yeah as a mage i mean there's no wizards in the game there's mages uh but if you start off as a fighter you might not need the abilities and it's also very good to start off as a fighter because then you're gonna get the health pool of the fighter uh, because depending on what class you select you get different health values every time you level up and the fighter has the highest of all uh, of all the life's values and then at level 9 you stop gaining life points anymore for your class so if it's very common in in this game to go level 9 with a fighter class any fighter class and then switch into something often a mage or a cleric but sometimes a thief uh, that's very common that's the human then we have elf half elf dwarf halfling gnome and half orc 
Okay, so all of these classes, what they have in... Or all these races, again. All these races, what they have in common is that they can multi-class. Multi-class means you start off as both classes at once, but you need twice the experience, because you need experience... Both classes gain experience, but they share experience. The experience that you gain. Um, in practicality, what this means is that a multi-class character will usually be one to two levels. Something like that, below your other characters. And that might matter for like a spure, spure, a pure spellcaster class, but it doesn't matter super much in my opinion for like fighter classes. Like uh, if you have like a fighter duel or something like that. Spellcasters will be a little bit sad if they can't get the next level spell or something like that. Uh, not too big of a dealio if you multi-class or dual class. I would even... I would say that dual class is probably even stronger than multi-class. My personal opinion, I don't know, I'm not an expert. I've just played around a little bit with this game. And to me, it seems like dual classing is very good. Multi-class is also good. Sick classing is fine also. <laughs> Depends on what you do, what you want to do with your character. Okay, so we have the elves and the half-elves. They all get some bonuses. And you can see the first thing that is weird about this edition. The thack. Oh, the tacker is not the tackers. Mm. Uh, this stands for. Do I remember? Uh, two hit at armor class zero. Two hit at armor class zero. That is as simple as this. You get plus one at this. It's very confusing because your armor goes down while your thacker goes up. But it works out. So uh, it's a good bonus for both short swords and long swords. Uh, so we have the half elves and the elves, and then we have the dwarf, gnome, and halfling, which are a little bit special because they get a bonus saving throw against different things. So all of them, as you can see, have different bonus saving throw based on their constitution. So if you have a lot of constitution, this bonus is really, really strong. So if you um, want, for instance, someone who is very good against death magic. Uh, then a halfling, for instance, might be very good. Or if you want someone as good as this paralyzed poison death, then a dwarf with high constitution is gonna be very, very strong at this. Also, by the way, oh, we, we get to that, we get to stats. Uh, because, yeah, we can get region. Uh, enough about that, okay. And then we have half orcs, they have improvision. I don't think improvision does anything in this game, I might be wrong. Uh, okay, but plus strength, plus one constitution, and minus two intelligence. I think that's like you can see in the dark a little bit. Uh, but I don't think it affects anything. Uh, so that's the last one. Uh, so let's say we select a human here. And we go into classes. Here we have a lot of classes. Which classes can be dual classed? It's very few. Uh, you can dual class the fighter. You can dual class the cleric. You can dual class the mage. You can dual class the thief. Is there anyone I'm forgetting? No, I think that's all you can dual class. If you can't make a paladin fighter, you can't make a paladin cleric, a shaman monk, a sorcerer druid, or maybe the druid. Can be multi class, I don't remember. But okay, so let's say we select the fighter, for instance. Uh, then you get to select the class kit. The class kit is like what defines the character, it, it changes it a little bit. So we can just take the raw fight, you don't need to take class kit. Uh, the first one is the Berserker. This is probably the strongest from what I get after reading a little bit on the internet on uh, this stuff. Uh, of course it seems very good, but I tried out the Berserker also. And it seems very strong. What is the, does the Berserker do? He has the advantage that he has the Rage ability. And Rage it lasts for one turn. One turn is... Uh, it's not just you know, a second or two. It's a while. I don't remember how long. It's 20 or 30 seconds. Something like that. While in rage, a berserker gains bonus plus two to his attacks and damage rolls as well to his armor class. And that's very good. But he also gets immune to charm, confusion, fear, feeble mind, hold, imprisonment, level drain, may stun, and sleep. Which is almost every spell in the game <laughs> that it gets immune to. That's why he's so good. Uh, and he gains 15 temporary hit points, which is very, very good on early levels because often you don't have more than like 50. Maybe have, if you're a fighter, you often have like between. 11 and 16, 17 hit points, depending what class you go. If you go for a Barbarian, might have like 17. Uh, so it's like double your HP on the first level. And then on later levels, having Im immunity to all these state effects is very good. And also having, of course, plus to the attack rolls 
is super good also and the armor class main this guy is good okay and then afterwards uh when the enrage is over he gets minus two to his armor class to hit rolls and the damage rolls he may not specialize in a ranged weapon which doesn't matter because your berserker is gonna hit the melee anyways and he's restricted to non love okay that's the first one wizard slayer i'm not gonna talk too much about them i want to just highlight a few interesting ones so the berserker very good uh wizard slayer i'm not gonna talk about too much he's good against wizards <laughs> kensai is a little bit special he is a good class if you want to multi-class into a wizard or something later on or a thief or something which doesn't use anything that doesn't use armor essentially he cannot wear armor he cannot use missile weapons uh not wear gaunt gauntlets or bracers uh and his alignment is restricted to non coding I'm pretty sure that wear any armor also refers to that he can't wear a helmet. And if you wear a helmet in this game, uh, it protects you from critical strikes. It's very, very good to have a helmet in this game. So I'm, it's very, very bad to not be able to wear armor. Uh, but you get plus two bonus to armor class, plus one to hit damage rolls every three levels. You get uh, speed factor bonus and you can use the Kai ability. So it's a pretty cool class, uh, pretty unique. And then you have the Barbarian, and the Barbarian also has a Rage ability, but his Rage ability is a little bit different from the Berserker. He also has immunity, but he doesn't have as good immunity, unfortunately. He has immunity to Charm, Hold, Fear, Maze, Stun, Sleep, Confusion, and Level Drain, which is good. But Berserker has more, <laughs> right? So, And then he gets plus 4 bonus to Strength and Constitution, and minus 2 to Armor Class, which is negative, of course. Uh, which is pretty good. Uh, and then, okay, well, plus two bonus to saving throw versus spell. But this guy, I think, is also very good. He also has a hit die D12, which is the highest. Uh, I think a regular fighter has a D10 hit die. That's how many life points you start off with. So a fighter will start off with 10, but this guy is going to start off with 12, plus your constitution modifier, which we're going to talk about when we got to the attributes. So I'm not going to talk about all the classes, but uh, Berserker worth pointing out if you want to have an OP class. That's very good. So what are the roles of uh, these characters? Fighter, melee guy, of course. Ranger can be melee, but usually if you go ranger, you go ranger because you want to do some ranged fighting. Paladin is a fighter cleric hybrid, you could say. Cleric is a healer, of course. He has access to some spells and fighting ability. Uh, but he will be a little bit worse than the fighter in many cases because the fighter can achieve grand mastery in a weapon while the paladin cannot. It's only the fighter that can achieve Grand Mastery in a weapon. Uh, the Cleric is a kind of a healer spellcaster. Uh, Druid is kind of a shapeshift. He's a he can do everything a little bit, but he's not super good at anything. <laughs> My humble opinion! There might be some Druid lovers out there. I think he's just decent at everything, but he's not exceptional at anything either. Uh, Mage is one of the best spellcaster classes, uh, along with the Sorcerer. Uh, we have the Thief, which is very useful for pickpocketing, for unlocking uh, doors, for finding traps, uh, unlocking chests. And then he has an ability called Detect Illusion, I think it's called, uh, which is not used too much in this game, from what I've heard, but if you be continue this playthrough to Baldur's Gate 2 at some point, then Detect Illusion is apparently useful in that game. Okay. Bard is a buffer, is the only buff class, uh, but from what I've heard from what everyone says on the internet, the Bard is not really that good in this game. He, he will come into his fullness in later editions, but the Bard in older editions seems to be not super good. Uh, Monk is a melee fighter, which according to most people is just worse than the, the, the fighter. I don't know about this thing, it's just what I've read about, so I might be completely wrong about this. Let me know in the comments. Um, if you have a good monk build or something that I should check out. And then we have the Shaman, uh, which I honestly don't know too much about. Uh, I know that he can't dual class or multi class. And as a D8 hit, I, I think he's a little bit. He's a little bit like the Druid, is what I, what I get the feeling from this guy. <laughs> That's about it. Okay, so we're gonna select Flighter and uh, sure, go with the Berserker. Next, we select an alignment, and the alignment matters for a couple of reasons. Depending on what alignment you choose, uh, 
people are gonna start liking you, your reputation will start at a different level. So for instance, if you're chaotic evil, you might have your reputation might be bad already when you start the game, or if you or uh, lawful good, for instance, you can't be lawful good because we are a berserker now, but uh, if you're lawful good, you will have a really good reputation when you start the game. And reputation is good because it affects how people treat you in the game and it also affects um, like shop prices and stuff like that. Also charisma affects it, but we're gonna talk about that later. And yeah, so we're gonna select neutral good there. Then we get to abilities. I don't know that it, there's any real advantage with being evil. I haven't found any. If you uh, if you know any advantage with being evil, then let me know. So here we get to the abilities. This is the first mini game. You can press. You can see total roll here, seventy-seven. If you press re-roll, we will get another value here, and the maximum we can get is one hundred and eight. But don't try to get one hundred and eight. Trust me, you will sit there forever and ever. Uh, what I would recommend after doing this for quite a bit. Uh, what I aim for, you can also press store when you have a roll, so that's yeah, 83, I want to keep that. What I would aim for, if you don't want, if you want to spend between like 1 to 3 minutes doing this, which is enough time doing this, trust me, uh, about 86 is what I would aim for on the total roll. Uh, you might though, if you're a fighter, it's a little bit different, because there's two things you keep in mind. First is the total roll here, but you also have another number, which is hidden, unless you... Uh, Add something to your strength there. So, <laughs> you have the left value here, because now we're at max. This only matters when you're at 18 strength. <laughs> Why? I don't know. Okay. 18 strength slash this number. This number right here. 18 strength is how much you will add to your thaco. I think it says it there, right? Okay. No, it doesn't. It's how much damage you're gonna add, and how much bonus you will have on your attack roll. It's very very good if you're a melee fighter, you need a lot of strength. The second number here... The, is only something you care about if you're at strength 18. If, you're at, if you have a plain orc, for instance, and you have a strength 19, this number does not matter, it doesn't even appear if you're at strength 19. But if you're on strength 18, you can def get different values here. If you get something that's below 50, you get no bonus for this value on your on your taco, <laughs> your tacos. If you get something that's over, but less than ninety, I think, then you get plus one. If you get between ninety and ninety nine, you get plus two. And if you roll zero zero, which is actually a hundred, then you get plus three on your tacos, which is the same that you would get if you have strength nineteen. Yeah, <laughs> so a strength 18 can be as good as a strength 19, except for they, they don't get the extra damage because they have a really good roll on this. Okay, so hope I explained that well. <laughs> Next is Dexterity. Dexterity gives you a bonus to your uh, armor class, the more you have on this. Uh, you don't get, by the way, you don't get 18 extra damage. It's based on a table, how <laughs> much damage you get. I think this is like 2 extra damage or 3 extra damage or something like that. Same too with dexterity. It's over 10, you get bonuses. Below 10, you go you go negative. That's the same with all the stats. Uh, so 10 is like... 10 or 9 is like base level. That's like average. And then be, uh, above it is very good, and below it is bad. Okay. Constitution is how much HP you get. And up to 20 constitution. Uh... There is no one who can get 20 constitution. You can't create a character with 20 constitution, but you can find a character with 20 constitution. So when you have below 20 constitution, you get bonus. First is how you have your hit die. As we saw the d12, d8, then it's even d4 for like wizards and stuff. Then you add the modifier to your constitution whenever you level up, and you get that amount of hit points also. So having high constitution is of course very good for all melee fighters and stuff like that. When you get up to constitution 20, you also... The 20th point of constitution does not give you more HP, but it gives you HP regen instead. The HP regen is very low, but if you travel, for instance, which you often do with this game, like, a travel takes 8 hours, you're gonna heal a lot. 
So it's quite nice to have a very high constitution. But as I said, you can't get to, you can get twins constitution later in the game when you have things which boost your constitution. Uh, but starting off, you can't have a character which start off with a twenty constitution. Um, yeah, and then we have intelligence. Intelligence is important for the wizard. It's what they base what level spells they can cast, and it's also important for a lore thing. How much you know about things, essentially, and that's important in dialogues, we want to understand. Then we have wisdom. Wisdom is important for your clerics. I was also think it's a druid which needs wisdom. Not 100% sure. And wisdom... So, do you need intelligence if you're a fighter? No, you don't need intelligence, but... Uh, if you're a fighter, but often if you're a fighter and you're a human fighter, you will dual class into a mage later on, in which case you're gonna need the intelligence. Uh, and on most classes, what you're gonna dump is gonna be charisma. We're gonna talk about that in one, just one moment. Wisdom, of course, uh, important if you're a cleric or a druid. Otherwise, it's only important for lore checks. Intelligence has one more thing that's important about it. There are enemies, if you go down to zero in any attribute, you die. You can get temporary minuses to things. Uh, usually it's constitution that you get minus to. But there are also mind flayers and stuff like that, which will give you, for instance, minus five to your intelligence, and it can stack multiple times. So having a higher intelligence score, having it higher than five at least, I would recommend, uh, makes it so that it can survive attacks from that. So that's also good on your fighter. So if you're gonna go dump something, maybe dump wisdom over intelligence on your fighter. Okay, last thing is charisma. And charisma on most characters does almost nothing, but it does one important thing, uh, which is why I recommend uh, maybe have a high charisma on your main character, because if you have high charisma, you get better prizes and better reactions from people that you talk to. So whoever is going to interact with everyone should have high charisma. Then you get better prices and stuff like that. So, um, then you just appearance and name. So what I'm gonna do here, I'm gonna import a character. I'm gonna find it. Oh, there it is. Barbarolina. This has 18 charisma. This is going to be the main character. I think I rolled a 91 or something on this character. Unfortunately, I rolled low strength, so we will not have bonus on our tacos. But we will have really good dexterity constitution and we'll have enough intelligence to later on spec into a mage with this uh, with this girl. Uh, let's go let's go exper uh, experience <laughs> appearance. Uh, we can listen to this the sounds here. Okay, that's perfect. That's the voice I want. Uh, Barbarlina. <laughs> that's perfect. It's easy to remember that's a barbarian that's named Barbarlina, and I don't need to think. Uh, we can create a party, actually. You can have up to six uh, characters that you start off with. Um, I would recommend at least starting off with two, in my opinion. Why is that? Why don't you go with everything? Yeah, you might go with just characters that you find in the world, and that's fine doing that. Uh, what I find, though, is that many of the characters... Um, with many of the fighter characters, at least, are not... Their stats are very bad, is what I'm trying to get to. So, uh, what I would recommend is, start off with... If you want to, start off with the fighter characters, uh, that maybe can dual class and stuff like that later on, but start off with fighter characters, and then you find, like, thieves and mages and clerics and stuff in the world, because those are easier to add to your party, and they don't need as good stats as the fighter class. The fighter classes are more, in my opinion, dependent on their stats uh, more than the other things. So, that's what we're gonna do. We're gonna create another one, which we're gonna import from a character file. And these are not super min maxed, so you can create these characters also if you spend like three, four minutes clicking around on the reroll button. Uh, I think that Berserker Lina here, uh, she rolled low, I think. She rolls. Oh, maybe she rolled higher. Man, 18, 18, 18. Okay, maybe she rolled, rolled decently good. I don't know what she rolled. But nobody rolled over 90. I know that. So maybe 89 or something. Uh, she's a Berserker. Strength 18, Dexterity 18. Also a high roll here on this. So we get a little bonus to our Thakos. Uh, Constitution and Intelligence because we're gonna multiclass later on into a Mage. She has Flail and Morningstar. Oh, I didn't talk about the weapons. Okay. 
Okay, so basically, I'm gonna tell you about the weapons. There are different uh, damage types of all the weapons. Uh, so for instance, a Flail Morningstar, these are bashing weapons, and those work against essentially everything in the game. There are piercing weapons and slashing weapons, such as the katanas, for instance, which deal more damage, but they don't work against everything. So what I would recommend, if you want to have an easy playthrough, is to just have things which deal that uh, bashing type of damage, because almost nothing has extra protection against that in the game. So that's why I would recommend that. And I have two weapon style. You can have two weapon style. Uh, two weapon style means you fight with two weapons. You can also have two-handed weapon style, which means you fight with a two-handed weapon. In general, you deal more damage if you have two weapons than if you have a big weapon. Um, so I don't know exactly what the upside is. I guess the upside with having one weapon is that you only need to find one good weapon. You need to find two good weapons if you have um, other weapon style. And also I would recommend having different weapons that you're proficient in with different people, so that not everyone needs maces, for instance, or everyone needs flails, because then you're not gonna have enough flails, you're gonna, you're gonna find a variety of weapons uh, in this game, so. Uh, and then the appearance, and sure, that looks fine. Ah, that's perfect. And she can be Berserker Lina, and accept, and we can, I'm gonna create a third one also, which is gonna be the Kensai. Lawful good. Uh, so, I wanted to create... Why does he have dagger as weapon proficiency and warhammer? Well, I wanted to try out someone who has throwing daggers, because if you have throwing dagger, you can actually throw daggers, even though Kensai says cannot use missile weapons. A throwing dagger is not technically a missile weapon in this game, so you can still throw daggers. And you will get your strength bonus. We have strength 19 because we have orc on this. Which means you will deal a lot of damage with a dagger. You will probably deal more damage with uh, throwing daggers than we would shooting a bow. Which is kind of cool. Uh, we have strength 19, 18 dexterity, 19 constitution. Again, this character is... I mean, it's a little bit min-max with the dumped charisma. But it's not super high stats. You can roll something like this easily. If you just click a couple of rerolls. Um, yeah, and appearance... Let's see, how long? This is already 27 minutes, my god, okay. We're gonna get through Candlekeep at least. <laughs> I'm gonna show you some... Uh, some things. Accept, okay, now I have three characters. Barbarlina, Berserkalina, and Kensailina. <laughs> Easy to remember, okay. Right. Uh, so, here we can choose difficulty. The game is not super difficult, I would say. It's, it's kind of easy on... It's not... If you know where to go, you can fight higher level stuff, it's not like recent games that where they like rebalance or wherever you go, like if you go to the last boss on level 1, he is also level 1, that's not how it works here. Thing, there are very difficult encounters, if you don't know where to go, uh, but I think that's kind of... I prefer that, is what I'm trying to get to. Um, I think Coralus is pretty good, you can do harder. But as you can see, the only thing that changes here is enemies inflict 50% more damage, enemies inflict 100% more damage. And uh, here they get improved hit points and Thaco, better saving throw. What I would recommend if you want a di more difficult game, from what I've read on the forums, because I haven't played with this, there's an add-on called like SCS or CL, I don't know, remember, something like that. And what it does is it revamps the enemies so that they have a better AI, and that's much more fun according to most people who play this. I didn't want to play a modded version, because I think most people are gonna play on unmodded anyways. But if you're into modding your game, that mod seems to be the go-to, because then you can play on core rules and still have a difficult, more difficult opponents, because they act smarter. Use better spells and stuff like that. I think that's more fun to fight again, rather than just adding more damage on them. So we have the core rules, I'm gonna venture forth. Lately, okay, uh, man, I didn't remember how long that was. <laughs> okay. Okay, we're here, we're orphans, we're gonna meet Gorion, essentially. <laughs> essentially, that's how it is. Okay, uh, so uh, we start off with three characters, of course, because we created three characters. We can zoom in quite a lot, we can zoom out quite a lot. You can't do this if, it, if you don't have the enhanced edition. Yeah, you can't zoom in and out this much. I don't think you can zoom at all, even. So... 
first of all, we're gonna go in here. Uh, I would recommend doing everything you want to do here immediately because you're going to not be able to come back here for a little bit. So, there's a couple of uh, fun things here. And you can do with these characters. Uh, so, first of all, this is our main character. Uh, she has high charisma. If you talk to this nobleman here and you have 18 charisma, the third option here, these are uh, noblemen, noble woman and a noble man, and they have a lot of treasures. And if you say, oh, I will not let it concern you, my lady. Perhaps they are not used to wealth such as yours. You are quite wealthy, are you not? Bring a lot of expensive jewelry with you. If you say that, he's gonna say, Oh, perhaps that was it. It may have, shocked. It may have looked as though it, we were showing off. I'm going to lock all my jewelry back in the room there, so I don't offend them again. This is very good, because now, if you do this, there's a chest on the second floor, which if you go to that chest, um, you will find a diamond if you can open it. I'm going to talk about how we can open it. And you're also going to get their value, so you're going to get a lot of money in the early game if you do this. Uh, this guy is also... There's a little bit of an easter egg in this guy. What? So if you That's talk to him... Move up here. I will talk to this guy. One, two, six, seven, eight, nine, and thirty. Oh, part has gained gold, 300. <laughs> if you talk to him 30 times, you get 300 gold. <laughs> uh, now we can go up to the second floor. Such menial tasks. And uh, check out what's over here. Here is a chest. You can either pickpocket or pickpocket. You can either unlock this chest if you have a thief. Uh, we don't have a thief. Or if you have someone who is a barbarian with at least 18 strength. What and as it? so happens, our main character is That's there for a measure. barbarian with 18 strength. If you then cast your barbarian rage, you use your quarter staff on this thing, you will successfully unlock it. If you don't have that much strength, you will not be able to do this. And inside it, there will be a diamond and a fire necklace and a fire what opal. Such menial tasks. Then we can go into this guy's room, and this guy also has a chest, but if you steal something from that chest, uh, he'll call the guards, and that's not good. Uh, we can probably defeat the guards, to be fair, but then we'll lose and all our reputation if we do that. So instead, what we're gonna do, yes. we're gonna take our... Uh, Haven't you got nothing better to do? We're gonna take everyone. What I do? What is it? Take the fists. Okay, fist. M. Okay. Now he's unconscious. Why does it Fine. play this music though? And then we can just open this chest. I don't know why the music changed. Then we can talk to Winthrop. Oh, that's outrageous. So what do you have? Okay, so here you can sleep, which is very good. Uh, we're gonna do that just to get our abilities back on this girl and then we can also go to this menu right here and we can buy stuff so first of all we need to sell the sapphire that's a thousand gold that's quite a lot so with the magic of editing uh, i just sped up this part so now i bought three mazes here why have i bought three mazes when you can only wield two well sometimes weapons break so i have two mazes I bought the splint veil and put on this girl, so she now has armor class 0, before she had 6, uh, so armor class of course goes down, then get negative armor class down there. Uh, then he didn't have another, so I bought a chain mail and gave this girl two flails and also a helm. Uh, this girl did not get a helm, why did she not get a helm? Okay, the helm on you. Uh, this girl can size, so she can't wear a helmet. And she got a lot of throwing daggers. Uh, because we're not going to be able to buy throwing daggers in the next town, I think. Also, look at the damage. 10 to 13. That's quite a lot. 5 to 10. 8 to 30. I think that's, that's pretty good for the play, though. But 10 to 30 is pretty good for range damage. That's because we get the entire strength bonus on our throwing daggers. Which is pretty nice for the can side. Uh, so. Um, yeah. Let's go out. We've done everything here. We bought everything. Also, got to mention. Uh, let's see. Here. I. Um, I bought a, a stack of bolts. It only costs one gold coin to buy bolts. So, why do we need bolts? Well, it's for a quest down here. I'm trying to walk inside here. Is that not possible? 
Come on. <laughs> okay. Talk to this guy. I should have joined the army. Nothing really. Uh, I was just wondering if you have any errands I could run. Oh, I need a quail of crossbow bolts. Oh, well, as it so happens. Oh, I bought some bolts. Oh, so we get 50 XP. Oh, that'd be nice. Some free XP there. Uh, then there's all you could do more quests, but <laughs> you can go and kill some rats here. Uh, you can go and uh, throw throw away some gold to increase your reputation here if you want to. Skills. There it is. On the skills, we have reputation average twelve. I'm pretty sure that average means that if we donate 100 gold, it will we will increase in your reputation. I think it's like 100, 100, then 200, 200, 300, 300. I'm pretty sure. Uh, but yeah, we're not gonna do that now. Why do you do that? If you have better reputation, you get better shop prices. That's the reason you do that. And then we're gonna meet Imwen. I'm surprised that stuffy old Gorion let you away from your studies and chores. This is essentially our childhood friend. Uh, so we can just be, leave me be, I have no time to waste on you today, child. Oh, what a funny guy we are, a oh, funny oh, girl, I mean. Child, I am glad I have found you. That's fine. Uh, I will probably increase the sound for the dialogues. Okay, I'm ready to go right now. Let's go right now. Let's not Listen carefully. do a lot of chatting. It's not needed. It is imperative that you make your way to the friendly arm in. Friendly arm in. Khalid and Jahira, okay. We might recruit one of them. We'll see. Maybe even both. We'll find out. Let's hurry, child. The night can only get worse, so we must find shelter soon. Don't worry. I'll explain everything as soon as there is time. Should have explained immediately. <laughs> it's almost comedic. I will explain everything soon. Moves one feet away, gets killed immediately. Oh, I'm not gonna spawn too much. <laughs> so Gorin is kind of boss. He's not level one as we are. He's kind of good. It's kind of strong. It's kind of uh, interesting though because you can fight all these characters. There's a lot of really, really good characters in. <laughs> if you go and uh, fight people in uh, Candle Keep, you'll find out that a lot of them are very, very strong. And a lot of them have like stories about them. Like DD stories. They're, they are like heroes so <laughs> of these stories. I haven't read any of them. I don't know the. The Drist books, but I don't know what the other books are, which where the other characters appear. No idea. Ambushed. You saw Gorion cut down before your eyes. Okay. Gorion got cut down. And now we meet Emon. I think this is a pretty good uh, spot to stop. I mean, we, we could recruit this girl. Uh, and yeah, she's recruited. I think that's gonna be it for the first episode. Next episode, I get to do some adventuring, some fighting, finally, some real fighting. I'm gonna find a diamond in a tree and stuff like that. Maybe we'll even find some really good armors and weapons. But that's gonna be next time. Thank you so much, amigos. And whatever the female version of amigos is, I don't really know. Even though I'm from Mexico. Am amigos de Lina. <laughs> <laughs> Maybe. Thank you so much for everyone for watching. And a special thank you, of course, to our Patreon members and our members here on YouTube. Ah! <laughs> thank you so much to Adam Alexis, Seaman Lauer, Rodney Cox, The Soft Pillow, Nathaniel Nissan, Laser Set the Stunner, Michael W., Topless Investments, Peter Gold, Charles Stevens, Gabriel Humanon, Way, Mesomog One, Your Old Basses, Tai Tai, You Lie Moonlight, Sock Breaker 2000, Jurassic Park, Invoke Legion, John Domian, Gazoo Saki. Uh, Only 7 Ellie Gardner, No V H, MC Hermes, Fumiaki Kinoshita, Jacob, Steve Raminski, Sky Surfer Zero, Tim Dutton, uh, Jake Dunley, The McDuncan, Relegan, Chase Closed, Honsa Cost, Agri Born, Ramen Noodles for Me, Nethervex, Musketeer, Tom Q, Name the Epithet, Their Lurgraf, Dimly Thanks, Tricker Mike, Yuan To Ying, Channel Fate Load, Anthony Nixon, Ninja Astral, Optimus, 
Pocky U, Magic Pistol Man, Seppi1310, Martin Newman, Captain Lorska, That Mr. Got You, Jake Palmer, Thomas Schwartz, Kyle Hoff, Judy Robinson, Robert Montgomery, Salim Proctor, Zach Coyla, QGL889, Song Comedy George, Paris Hammond, Bill Murray, Kale Wedgwood, Patrona Bavaria, Robert Parker, Adam Jacob, Fernando Viezu, Robert Lewis, Dr. Leos, Santa John, Geek Embracer, General Educator Embracer of Knowledge, Joseph Zuniga, Nate TMI, Shamanix, Matthias Porley, DJX Disorder, Carlos Ordenes, Simon Fairley, Evan Milley, William Cunningham, Connor Langdon, Kevin Yunyeya, Juan Limlenson, John Silver, AD Sibrosis, Yuri Lepikov, Isabella Nemi Lindfors, DJ Star in the Mix, Link is Week, Virokta, Dan Goodsell, Aaron Noble, Drew Styles, Adam Alexis, Matthew Goggins, Betsuma, Serge Karamaro, Freeman, Stepson, Brenton Dobbs, DBK Drummer, Rainbow Cake, and Vandom Tatum, Piotr Stanordix, Ninja Longum, Infinite Draw, Dr. Jada, Javier Diaz, Adam Ruth, Barbara McKenley, Buck with Ass, 7 Guy 777, Big Bob, MTG, Patrick Henning, Liquid E, Thanatos, Nesmoth, Truman, Yellowbean, Patrick Parks, Martin Newman, Jonathan Burgess, James Hazel, Harshit Singh, Eat It, Alexander G, Valencia, Lochinated, Travis Markley, Grinning Demon, Frank Sherwood, Farron, Sky, Disquieters, I Ate My Neighbor, Yuto Ayase, Christopher Tonkin, Guadalupe Hernandez, Bam Bam, Kevin C, Yoda for Sale, Trunks, 305 in KC, Michael Brown, Mark Rutledge, Amber Parrot, Jacob Harrer, and Rick, Mr. Joe, you guys are amazing! Thank you so much for watching! Also, big thank you to our Patreon members. By the way, if you want to learn how to bake some bread, your own bread, then check out now. Just kidding, these are some videos that Google recommend. I can't guarantee it's baking bread videos. That would be cool, though. If you want to support me, there's a link to my Patreon down below. Thank you all so much for watching, and stay hipster.